back, and next up is the science segment, and yes. Barbara, Barbara is Roberts, the host. Yes, yes, she's the host. She's the incredible host, and she will be interviewing Professor Ed Stander yes. of SUNY Cobble School. He's a professor of geology and astronomy there, a very, very talented guy who also makes some music. This is very interesting because he plays glasses. Absolutely. But it's an instrument. What's that instrument called? It's, it's called the glass harmonica. And the glass harmonica. Yeah, it, it, it's uh, from the British uh, culture. And mm -hmm. uh, let's see what he has to say about this. Okay. feeling the overwhelming need to applaud. Our next guest here on Impact uh, this week is Ed Stander, professor of uh, geology, astronomy, and apparently wine glasses. Ed, welcome to the show. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> what in the world is this? Oh, come all ye faithful on dinnerware? Yeah. Well, it's uh, sort of a portable bar. Ah. Actually, I call it a piano bar myself but it used to be called a glass harmonica back in the 1700s. So where does this creation come from? From England. Those English. Yeah, those English. They started out, well, the story is that it was a guy named Richard Puckeridge who played on the London stage, and he started out with 19 glasses, and then he added more and more and more to the point where there was over 100 glasses in a kit. And it became so unwieldy that he stopped playing. In fact, he wound up uh, dying along the way, <laughs> trying to save his glasses from a house fire. So he was running across the stage back and forth trying to keep trying his to fingers keep wet going. moving right. these glasses back and forth yep and so it was a popular instrument uh, and it was played in Fra France at one point uh, Benjamin Franklin saw it a guy named Edward Delaval was playing it decided it was a great idea but too big and so he kept each glass on their side put one inside the other put an axle through the center and turned the whole thing on a treadle so then you'd hold your fingers there so and, the like this, and the glasses would go around and the glasses would go around but it's a very different sound see the glasses, effectively, what they are, are a bunch of bells. Like if I hit the glass, I get the same sound as if I play it. Nope, I got it. Beautiful, gotta, absolutely beautiful. Yeah, see, I'm, I have no music talent whatsoever. Right, it's the same thing. But the difference is, is what I'm doing is when I play it, uh, my fingers are wet, and they stick to the glasses, and they actually distort it. So it, it, it actually bends the glass, and the glass snaps back. Oh. So what you're hearing is stick slip. It's exactly the same thing that happens on a violin when you put a bow on it and you pull, the rosin sticks to the string and then the string bounces back. So it's mini plucks on a violin Continuous. and here it's mini uh, squeezes on your glasses. And that's why you get the buzzing sound that you hear in the background. The, uh, you can actually see it. If I play this glass hard, watch the water in the glass. See going around? I used to put a fish in there and it would go crazy. Oh, he'd be dizzy. Ugh. Yeah, so basically what happens is where I touch the glass, there's no sound or very little sound. And so if my finger's pointing at a person, the sound goes down and there's four nodes. There's four positions where there's no sound and in between it's loud. So the glass is vibrating like this and that's what makes the vibration of the glass here. So if I play it fast, you can hear the vibrato that develops. Listen to this. That's something you don't hear with the glass harmonica, because the glass harmonica with the rotating glasses, your fingers are always in the same place, so the sound's always the same. So can we do this with something other than glasses? You brought some props here today. I always bring props. I have to, because <laughs> otherwise it's boring. <laughs> yeah, I got a, a singing bowl. This is the original glass harmonica, uh -huh. except it was made of metal. And effectively, it's the same thing. What they used to do, what the, what the monks would do, is if they hit the glass, uh, hit it like that, it would ring forever. But after a while, it would sort of dissipate and they'd have to hit it again. It wasn't so exciting. So what they learned to do is to take this thing and rub it along the side like this. And what happens is the sound builds on itself, more so when it's not wet. Huh. Let's see if I can do that again. No, it's not going to do it. It's too wet. So I don't know if we can hear this at home, but there's a bunch of tones 
that are complementary that are all kind of piled on top of each other. So how does That's that right. work? What's the physics of that? Well, it's sort of weird. The sound you're hearing, uh, any sound that comes out of a glass or a bell for that matter, same thing, uh, the main tone is called a hum tone, and you actually can't hear it. It's very, very low frequency. Mm. So when I'm doing this, there's actually a very low frequency sound you can't hear. But what you're hearing is the first harmonic. And harmonic tones in general, whether it's on a guitar or something else, are an octave above the actual note that you're hearing. And that's why when you play it, it sounds like it comes from everywhere and nowhere at the same time. So it's a very ethereal sound because you're not actually hearing a sound that should be coming out of the glasses. And it's interesting, too, because here in the studio, guys, I'm not really hearing the sound come out of here. It's all around us. So I'm not really sure if we can convey that at home. It's probably coming to you from your TV set. But yeah. uh, it's definitely a sound that fills the room. I think we've drawn quite a crowd here. Yeah, at I, can, I can do. It's actually 3D sound. If you have a 3D radio <laughs> or television, you can hear the 3D sound. It's really pretty cool. A new innovation from Sony. Yeah. It's just like it's much better than smell vision So how do you tune these? Uh, I use a turkey baster. Mm. which it loses a lot of credibility when you use a turkey baster, but when you're a traveling musician, you never know when you're going to run to a turkey. There we go. I've, well, I'm also, by the way, I'm using uh, Schenectady water with the glasses. Voted one of the best waters uh, in, uh, in New York State. So. Right. Some, sometimes I've tried other glasses. I try their liquids. For example, it doesn't work very well with beer. Why doesn't it work with beer? Well, it works for about a half an hour, then it goes flat. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, if that I, was coming. Yeah, if I, if I play weddings, I'll use champagne. It all depends on what I'm trying to do. Uh, if I'm doing heavy metal, I'll use lead crystal. This oh, is just, this expensive is just, stuff. That's right. This is just regular glass. Now, this is, this is kind of a traveling set. You've right. got 12 different glasses here. Uh, the guy in England had 100, so right. do you have a larger set? Of course. I've got 64. 64. Which is really Eight the, octaves. the piano bar. And I, there's music written for this by Mozart and Beethoven and Strauss really? and Berlioz. And I play that on the 64 glass instrument. And this do, your is neighbors, a lot do your neighbors call you and say, tone it down a bit? No, but if they're having a party, they ask me to come over mm -hmm. and bring my glasses. Mm -hmm. Speaking yeah. of parties, I understand you have a couple albums out? <laughs> yeah, I've got two albums out. Uh, I play with a guitarist. We all both had our hair cut too short before a concert. And we were known as the Furry Eggs. So. We have two concerts, two albums called For the Furry Eggs, and actually I've sold several thousand of them, so I'm very proud of it. And you have a Christmas album, too. You betcha. Doesn't and, everybody? Uh, I don't. You don't. I don't have a Christmas album yet. Maybe this will be the entree to my Christmas album. I would hope I'll so. I'll mooch on to your music. Right. So how do you tune these suckers? Uh, it's tuned to itself. The, uh, most, there's only water in three glasses. The rest are empty. Oh, wow. So, yeah. for example... It's actually perfectly in tune. In fact, people who are, have perfect pitch have come over and asked me if I have perfect pitch. And I usually tell them that, uh, no, my relative has perfect pitch, but I have relative pitch. Relative pitch. Right. Well, can you play us out one more uh, tune uh, as we go? Uh, sure. I guess something from Beethoven? Sure, I can do that. Let me see if I can do that. Uh, this is a shortened version of the Ninth Symphony. Um, and after it, if I have time, I'll play a variation of the Ninth Symphony that I wrote. Oh. Beethoven actually used my music. Oh, isn't that? You look uh, younger than you actually are then. I am very much. I will say goodbye now. Goodbye to our guest, Dr. Ed Stander, SUNY professor, geologist, and accomplished musician. Thanks, Ed. It's a real pleasure.
Well, we're back, and what beautiful music that was from that Professor was. Stander on the glass harmonica. I can't believe the sound that he got out of those glasses. That's, that's it. And one thing that fascinates me about this interview is that a scientist, a guy who, whose world revolves around astronomy and geology, could create such beautiful music. Well, there is some science and maths to music as well. And, yes. and I, I guess there is a connection, which is why this show has science as well as arts, right? right? 